Landcorp runs three dairy units at Cape Falwind near Westport. Landcorp's been involved in a number of dairy conversions which often involve land being prepared for production by a process known as flipping. It involves using excavators to dig down two to three metres, inverting topsoil and breaking up the iron pan, a soil structure that hinders good pasture drainage and is prevalent on the coast. Rebecca Keegan is Landcorp's dairy business manager for the West Coast. She has a medical science degree, a business management diploma and is a team leader on the Dairy Manager of the Year award program for the Dairy Industry Awards. I manage here on the Cape Valley three farms. There's Bassett's, which is this farm, Tram Road, just down the road, and Totra Farm, and two farms in the Grey Valley, so it's Thompson's and Somerville. And the cow ranges from 1,200 in total down to 800 per farm. This is the oldest farm, Bassett's, uh, and so 12 years ago they flipped this part. There was parts that were contoured as well, and then they moved down the road. They flipped Totra, which was second. Four years ago, they flipped again over at C Block, which is just down the road. Some more hectares, which is now part of Totra. There's a fair bit of QE2 Covenant as well, lots and lots of native. Lots of parky, bush, manuka, gorse, lovely flower we have here. You know, a lot of it was a non-productive, very wet land. The strength at Bassett's now is it has a good organic layer on the soil. It's summer safe and winter safe, so we have some nice wet areas down the bottom which are perfect for the summer and we have some fairly dry stuff up here for the winter. Really productive now in terms of grass growth and holding cover well. The newer farms, so Tram and Totra, uh, certainly in the winter they are drier, uh, but they don't produce as much. They're still not quite as fertile as this farm is. We're wanting to manage as many animals on the farm as possible, but still be able to feed them sufficiently. We've got um, challenges in minimising fertiliser, but still maximising enough to get growth rates to feed our animals. Bassett's is one of our top performing farms in Landcorp. In the last two years it's been in the top five for both for productivity and for quality. We've got Jack Raharuhi who's uh, managing this farm. It's his first season as farm manager but eighth season with Landcorp. So very experienced and been through the ranks and very proven. Landcorp has a very, very clear health and safety policies and procedures. Good systems, good management systems. We've made quite some changes in the last particular year and of course one of those is, is how we manage bikes around the farm. We used to have a mix of quad bikes, um, side by side such as these, two wheelers uh, on the farms and, and since we've had some, some issues with, with quad bikes uh, recently and a lot of injury stats from Australia and New Zealand suggest that quad bikes um, are seven times more likely uh, to cause an injury. We've made the decision at Landcorp that there are no quad bikes on dairy farms. All our side-by-sides are fitted with roll bars, the doors as well, and the safety belt. And you can never be done with safety in terms of helmets and a side-by-side. -side. There's still an opportunity if, if you fall out of one of those that, that you're going to pitch your head. Um, so we need to be safe in all aspects. There's a very clear induction processes for, for staff that are coming onto site and for new staff. Uh, new staff are buddied up when they, when they arrive on a farm to make sure that they know what's going on. Uh, we have very good hazard registers, um, good uh, job hazard analysis, hazard ID and, and safety systems in terms of communication for, for farm members. We've got uh, some of the oldest flip land here at Bassett's, actually on the Cape, from the dairy farms. It's growing well, as you can see, good cover on the grass and some of the most fertile that we have here now. Initially, sulphur and potassium are some of the big keys. Um, this now isn't so deficient in sulphur, but it is still a bit in potassium and then just maintenance fert in terms of managing pH. Fertiliser after flipping definitely, it is a significant cost, needs a focus for the first sort of two or three years, and that in combination with which paddocks have propped, so they get that cultivation as well and the additional fert. If you work it together in a combination, then you can grow the fertility. In reality, they're, they're much better once they're flipped because they're just so, they're so wet when they first start. Um, we can manage them a lot better in terms of cows on during the winter. Uh, they don't necessarily dry out too much in the summer now, but they are, they're much, much more manageable than they were. Grazing challenges are, are less, but even at this time of the year, it's still a challenge from a pugging perspective, um, weight of animals, number of animals that are on it, but that's no different really to anywhere else here on the coast. Initially, they were ryegrass that went into these paddocks after flips. Over the last few years, we've tried some fescue. Fescue works better on paddocks when you can stand them off for, for longer periods. You can't graze to that really low level. 
And we've had some challenges around these farms in terms of how we can manage grazing and fescue at the same time. So we've started to phase that back out again and really gone back to our standard grasses. Grass is best, tight times. Um, it, you can't manage what you, what you don't measure. So certainly the focus from, from Jack on, on this farm is, is absolutely plating, knowing every blade of grass and, and utilising to the best use. So we can you know, use every bit of grass rather than supplement. We're at C Block at the moment, standing in our newest flipped piece on Totra Farm. These pastures are our newest pastures, the very thirsty pastures. There's four or five years into the mix now, and they've had their initial capital fit program, they've given us some grass, and now they've been hit by bug damage. So the manuka beetle is in here. We've sprayed it out, and they'll be cropped, and try and get that cultivation and, and growth back in them again. You can see some tufty parts where the beetle has eaten, and it just literally kills the grass. It eats it from the bottom, eats the roots, so the grass dies, then the moss takes over, and we have patches of no growth at all. To minimise the beetle damage, where you really need a decent organic layer, uh, and that really in this flip land comes over time. So we're trying to concentrate the animals in this area. Uh, cropping helps over time, but you've still got, you still just need time, effort, growth, cows on the land. We spray when it gets to a certain pe certain point and try and keep on top of the bug. Um, doesn't gives you a 60 to 70 percent kill rate. Doesn't always kill it off, uh, and realistically, it's just waiting for that that inherent resistance to come back. Across all of these farms, we're looking at feed supply and stocking rate, in particular on Tram and Totra, and knocking back a few cows per hectare to make sure we can still feed adequately. Two of the farms are on once a day instead of twice a day milking, and that's really minimising cost, maximising production per cow, rather than numbers of cows to get the production and volume. We are still bringing in supplement, but at a much lower rate. So grass is king, and that's really what we're aiming for, plating, measuring, managing, and trying to reduce the amount of inputs in terms of supplement. Not worried about the long-term impact at once a day, no. Um, there may be an initial drop in terms of production, but if the cows are fed properly, the grass is managed properly, then production can still be there. And who's to say that in, in two years, optimistically, the payout goes back up again? There's still an opportunity to milk twice a day again during those times. <coughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.